Hi guys. Hi. Hi, this is Jim. He's a 20 year old male, um, high speed RTC. He's got an um, abdominal hemorrhage internal. He's got a right tip and fib. He's time critical. We can do a rapid extrication out of the back of the vehicle. Louise, can you take the back for me? And Mark, can you take the front passenger yep. seat? Thanks, guys. Okay, Jim, my colleagues are here now. We're going to get you out of the vehicle as quickly as we possibly can, okay? From a point of reassurance, it's most important that the paramedic um, remains calm and confident throughout. Um, remaining confident gets transmitted across to the patient, and by taking control of a situation, it, it, it's, it's vitally important that the patient knows that, that somebody's there, they need help, and they're getting their help and that certainly does alleviate uh, the worry and stress of a situation. Okay, I'm going to lower the seat back, yeah? Okay, you can take on his torso for us, Mark. Support uh, his torso. Just going to lower the seat down from behind you, Jim. Oh. Okay, so go with us. Okay there, Andy? Yep. Okay, you can slide your hand down, sir. Right, okay. I've got the top part there. Okay. Okay. We're going to slide Start up the board about six inches at a time on ready, set, and slide. Okay. Yep. Is, Mark, you take over the pelvis for me. You've got the arms I have. under the arms there. Excellent. Ready, set, slide, and rest. Okay. Are his feet clear? Yes. Okay. And another six inches. Ready, set, slide, and rest. One of the key things is actually your hands on the patient, as you said, uh, keeping hands actually on them, it just reassures the patient, especially uh, when they're a long, prolonged extrication, just a hand on the patient reassures them they know someone's there with them because they can't see what's going on, they're just not on their own that way. Okay, now we'll go another six inches, ready, set, slide and rest. Okay, reposition, you're happy? I'm happy. Another six. Ready, set, slide, and rest. Ready, set, slide, and rest. Will you take over the head for me, Matt? Okay, I'm on Andy. Excellent. Mark, you ought to move forward as well. Okay. How are you doing there, Jim? Okay, sir. Nearly out of the car. Okay, I've got control. Okay, Communication um, is really important and people associate am the ambulance service and people turning up to assist them with trust and also comfort. Re relieving anxiety through talking to a patient, communication, um, responding and listening to them as individuals goes a long way to actually start the process of alleviating anxiety, pain and discomfort. Guys, we're going to slide the board out to the edge of the car to start off with. Everybody ready? Yep. yep. Ready, set, slide, stop. Right, the in. It's all about a third of the way up. Everybody ready? No, just need to reposition. Okay, everybody ready? Yes. Yep. Okay, ready, set, slide, and stop. Okay, ready, set, slide, and stop. Straps on. Okay, I want a quick reassessment of Jim if I can. How are you doing there, Jim? Just stick your tongue out for me, sir. Take a deep breath for me, and out. In, and out, again. <laughs> And once more. Thank you, Jim. Take a deep breath for me. Lovely. And his trachea is still central. Pulses, still tachycardic. Just gonna have another feel of your tummy. Still hurting. Okay, fine, guys. With the abdominal trauma, we don't know what's ruptured under there something has with the bruising and the guarding on the abdomen uh, needs a surgeon's knife if you don't get in there quickly it's uh, beyond our scope really
The golden hour is uh, what we use to describe the first hour uh, of what's happened post the traumatic incident. Uh, patient survival is dependent on rapid assessment, management and transportation to hospital and the golden hour actually ends when uh, the patient reaches the receiving hospital and actually gets seen by a surgeon because it's the surgical intervention that will save a patient's life. Traumatic incidents like that, so you get a lot of movement of the, uh, the neck and there's a severe risk of any uh, neck damage. And with the uh, spinal cord actually running very close to the spinal vertebra, which is the bones in the actual spine, there's a risk of uh, damage to the nerves there. And unfortunately, uh, any damage there is uh, irreparable. Excellent, well done. OK, I've got a T spine for you. OK, I've got control. Jim, you're just going to feel some blocks coming on the side of your head. Try and keep still for me. Another one on your chip. Once we're in the back of the ambulance with the patient package that you saw on the spinal board there, we then go back to basics again. We do the primary survey, which you saw us do when we first approached the car, checking the airway, breathing, circulation again, just to make sure nothing had changed in the meantime. We'd also establish uh, two wide-bore cannulas into a vein, which gives us a drug route and also a route to give some fluids to this patient. Because they're bleeding into the body, so we just need to maintain their uh, perfusion and maintain a radial pulse, keep all the organs functioning effectively. We then also look at giving the patient some analgesia, some pain relief. Uh, we'd, in this situation, probably give some morphine, uh, just small amounts of morphine initially, because otherwise it uh, drops the blood pressure, which obviously we, we don't want to do anymore, so just to make them more relaxed and reduce the pain. We then also uh, get round to looking at that leg that you saw, where well, I mentioned it was actually uh, a fractured um, tibia and fibula. So we then look at putting uh, a box splint around it, just to immobilise that leg, and prevent any further damage. The reason you saw we didn't do anything at the scene is uh, that wasn't actually our main priority. That is not a life-threatening injury, whereas the abdominal trauma was. Mm -hmm.